I want to start, uh, Teddy, from the beginning, okay? okay? When you came out of your mother, do you remember? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I want to. Uh, what? <laughs> Obviously, you have one of the most famous last names out there. You know, like there's there's so many famous last names. When you see the name Mellencamp, I obviously people when you pay a credit card, they look at your license. Like, you know, they look at who your you know they think of who your father. At what age did you realize your father was a star? You like know, people always ask that. So he his first hit was the year I was born, so 1981, and. I grew up, you know, I was in Indiana until I was in the third grade. Then my parents got divorced and I lived in South Carolina with my mom. And then my dad got a house there and that's kind of how it, it went down. And I have to say, because I grew up in Hilton Head, that's only 12 miles long. Nobody really made a big deal about it because it was like they'd known me our entire lives. Maybe occasionally, like if you'd come to a volleyball game, people would be like, but it wasn't, it just was so normal for us. And we didn't live like, it's not like kids out here when they, you know, come from that kind of background. We didn't live this like huge life. Like we didn't go on these, like, you know, we weren't heading to like Capri and like going to these places. Like we were just like, we're like going to Michigan to go skiing. So like, it was a really regular childhood growing up. The only time it would be, it was when I came to LA and I was 17 years old and I worked at CAA and my boss was trying to get into reservation and he goes, Oh, can, I can't get in. Can you just use your name? And I was like, huh? <laughs> like, what do you mean? And he's like, no, just say Mellencamp like, and they'll get you in. And I was like, Hmm, there must be something to this. I would say probably, I always knew that he was talented. Sure. But it, the fame part didn't hit me until I came out to LA. But here's the thing, while you're growing up and you're in school, and I know that you make it seem very normal, but at the same time, do you feel that people wanted to be your friend, to be close to your family? Because, you know, I didn't grow up in a, a famous family, so I don't think I experienced it. But I'm just curious if you felt like people were like, oh, I want to be your friend just so I can be included in the, you know, like uh, it's not even like the kids, dinner it's like party. the parents. I would uh, say. Maybe the parents, but the kids, I never really got that feeling. I mean... And when I came out here, I had no friends. It was a really hard transition for me. And, you know, you work in the mailroom and everybody was older than me. I was 17. And like the first year in LA was really hard. And it like, so I don't think people really gravitated to now. I think it gets me in certain doors that maybe I wouldn't have, but definitely growing up, I didn't feel that like allure of having a famous dad really got me any, any favors in the friend department. <laughs> you know, Growing I, I'm, up, I'm either I'm a personality where you either love me or you hate me. So it's that's kind of been the the par for the course my entire life. Who were some of the cool people that you would see? Like, obviously, your dad has a lot of musician friends. Like, growing up, do you remember? And like, maybe you weren't even a fan of them, but like, you know, like I was just reading Dave Grohl's book, and he was like, "Yeah, my daughter's sitting on the piano, and Paul McCartney joins her and starts playing with her and sings to her." Like, did that happen for you growing up? Like, was there kind of cool people like around the house or? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I remember. I mean, my dad was really strict, so there was a time that I said, "Like, I'm gonna be home." I'll, I went and rode my bike to the barn, and I was like, "I'll be back in a couple hours." But I had no concept of time, you know, as a kid. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you know, probably six hours later, I see his like car pulling in like fast. I'm like, "Oh hell." <laughs> I'm like, I'm about, to get, I'm about to get in trouble. And he's like, I just had a couple hours. We've been worrying about you. So I get back to the house and it just so happens that Madonna and Sean Penn are there. And I am sitting around like a table with them getting in trouble. And he, my dad's like, your birthday's canceled for the record. We, your, 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 my birthday was supposed to be the next day. So my one memory of meeting Sean Penn and Madonna <laughs> was getting my birthday canceled because I didn't go home on time. Like this That's was my life. Nothing so, like getting scolded in front of those two. Yeah. Between that and then the time that I met Bob Dylan and I didn't know he's not like a handshaker. This was pre-pandemic. So my dad's like, this is my daughter, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, hi, nice to meet you. And I put my hand out, but he went to like, give me the bump, like to fist pump. But then I shook it, shook it. Like, it was, like, it was so <laughs> awkward. I was like, why am I the world's worst human? Like, why can't I just be less awkward? Like, you, you saw it, Teddy. You could have just done that. But now you had to shake his uh, paw. And you could tell he, like, wanted to get the spray, like, immediately. Like, he's like, Ugh. <laughs> That's so awesome. Now, do you did you get any of the musical talent from the, the family genetics yourself? 
I mean, when I first came out here, I wanted to be like an actress and a singer. I, you know, I pr pretty much I think I just wanted attention. So I create I did a demo and I had one song and I, I think I, you know, I'm not great. Let's put it that way. I'm, I'm very medium and I didn't <laughs> know how to play any instruments or anything, but I, I was a decent singer, but you know. Didn't work. Didn't pan out, guys. You, didn't, yeah. you never heard it. Make no. a good reality star, though. How about that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, when you worked at CAA, was were you just trying to see what was out there and maybe potentially become an agent or representative? Like, what what made you do that job? Well, the rule with my family was if you're going to come to LA after graduating high school, um, we're not. We'll, we'll strip your car out there, but we're not paying for you to be out there. Like, we wanted you to go to college. So I came out and. I, you know, had to start in the mailroom. I also worked at Mr. Chow and Euro Chow as a hostess. And, you know, I wanted to be an actor originally. And then what ended up happening is I, I, I got representation, not by CAA at the time. Granted, they rep me now, so I got it back. But, uh, <laughs> uh, and I had come out here and I gained a bunch of weight. I'd gained like over 75 pounds, like my anxiety and all of these things, like from the time I got signed. And I, uh, I booked a pilot.